let's talk about Apple's AI strategy uh, and the future of Apple, given that you've mentioned, uh, I think the one company that has very clearly overtaken Apple as the most uh, valuable uh, company in the world. Um, how are you seeing Apple's future play out in, 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 in the AI space? You know, if one could argue that its iPhone strategy has maybe played out and is now yeah. facing so much complexity. Uh, most of its competitors seem to be focusing on AI. How are you seeing Apple um, play play its uh, AI game? So before I say some negative things, let me just first start with the potential that Apple has is tremendous, right? Because... Um, before you tell me how your weaknesses, you're going to tell me your strengths. Yeah. <laughs> they have, and I'm not, this is a loaded term, but I'm not trying to mean it in a loaded way. They have a monopoly on the product both at the operating system level and the software level, right? So the, the, the hardware and the software uh, and the operating system, which means that if Apple um, sort of plays its, its cards correctly, um, something like Siri has unprecedented access um, using AI to do things on your phone that OpenAI and every other company will never be able to do. I mean, Apple can plausibly argue for, for privacy reasons that no AI agent on the phone will ever be able to sift through your emails to get answers. But there's no problem with Siri doing that. I mean, Siri already should be doing that, but, but they don't. So, you know, Apple has advertised this as part of Apple intelligence that it will be able to go through your photos to find memories for you, you know, within seconds. And, and, and so what that means is that they want um, the sort of infrastructure for AI to be within the phone itself. Right, not on, um, not exclusively anyway, on data servers, but um, on device processing, and that's something that OpenAI or whoever is never going to be able to to com to compete with. So I want to say that uh, you know if they've had a breakthrough on AI in the next five years, that will be the breakthrough, right? That everything is happening um, on chip rather than in the cloud, and that has huge consequences if they get that right because. Um, the processing happening on the device to be a good product would plausibly have to keep up with the insane development that we're seeing in the cloud. And what that would mean is that, you know, tens, if not hundreds of billions of people that really love Apple would see need to upgrade their phone every year or perhaps every two years rather than every four or five years because they want the latest AI features. So even if Apple's not charging monthly fees for access to its AI, um, you know, if the fact is, is that it requires higher processing and more memory on an annual basis to keep up with whatever's going on at OpenAI, um, then you would want to upgrade your phone. I mean, I, I would certainly be among the people that would want to have the latest and greatest AI features embedded on the phone every year and would therefore find myself in some sort of like financing program where I get a new phone every year. Um, so that matters greatly because remember, Apple revenue um, is still more than 50% made up for just from the iPhone hardware purchases. So if they can accelerate or maybe let's say crunch down the replacement cycle, that plays out uh, hugely for, for Apple. Yeah. Okay, so the potential is there. The trouble is, I see no plausible signal that they're about to unveil something um, at some sort of masterstroke level. And in fact, some of their best talent is being poached uh, by you know tens of millions of dollar pay packages to places like Meta. Um, and the most breakthrough things seem to be happening at OpenAI. And Apple has this privacy posture that I really support but it really hinders them in doing things quickly. Um, because if you think of something like Grok, the um, AI feature from Elon Musk, or even um, Facebook in terms of the AI features of, 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 uh, of Meta, what that allows them to do is it, 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 there's real time um, input into their own data centers where people are speaking, let's say, in Gen Z language, right? And so the models are able to adopt and mimic that language because they have daily, you know, frankly, minute by minute input from people around the world. And that goes into their data servers and they're able to, sort of able to train on that, right? That gives both of those companies major advantages. Apple doesn't have anything like that. I mean, the thing is Apple could if every time I used my phone, all of the text was being taken and scraped by Apple, but they're not going to do that. And so I don't want to criticize them for that. They shouldn't be doing that. I'm glad they don't do that. I really support that um, as, as, a, as a philosophy. You support it. Great. But, but it's boxing you with, you know, the gloves behind your back. Um, so I don't see how they sort of come out of that. It strikes me as a real conundrum. Um, and so I want to be clear that I'm just trying to just describing the situation. I'm not criticizing anybody for that. 
But so the fact that they don't have the AI features now, the fact that they advertise features that don't exist 16 years after the fact, and I'm referring to the Apple intelligence features, the fact that they seem to be losing some of their top talent and that, they're, that the, these other people seem to be racing uh, well ahead of them. And we can see that even in terms of market cap of Microsoft and NVIDIA. Um, it really doesn't lead me to think that, that Apple sort of has a lock on the future. And then let me just say one thing. The absurd response from the common person is to say, oh, yeah, but Apple's often late to a market. Look at the iPod. It wasn't the first MP3 player. Look at the smart, look at the iPhone. It wasn't the first smartphone. And what's weird about this is, yeah, that's true. But that's the Steve Jobs era. That's like me betting on the Chicago Bulls today because in the 1990s, they sure were great with Jordan. You would never make that mistake in sports, but we make that mistake all the time with Apple. And it's like, Steve Jobs isn't there. Johnny Ive isn't there. What evidence is there that Apple is going to come from behind in revolutionary AI technology and right. shock the world? It's a, it's a fantasy. Um, I just don't see it. And Tim Cook has great qualities, but AI, product vision, product design, none of those are his skill sets. In the same way that you recognize that LeBron James isn't the same player on every team, Tim Cook isn't the same player on every team. So I would say 2022, mission accomplished for Tim Cook. Well done. Here's a billion dollar package. Somebody else needs to come on board with a different skill set. That's what Apple needs right now.